All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the speaker series. Please, as always, um, mute your mics for us. I'm going to be coming in right now. I'm going to add them. We'll also be recording this too, so anything you want to go back to later, you always can uh, check back in and, and listen. If you have questions during the talk, please remember to put them in the chat or you can turn your microphone on. We actually prefer you turn your microphone on and ask the, actually ask Dr. Obo Wilkie, um, you know, what your question might be. She'd love to hear from you today. After she's done kind of giving her opening uh, spiel on what we're gonna do. But with that, we'll get started. So we're honored today to have Dr. Obo Wilkie to join us on our speaker series. She's a doctor um, of top optometry, sorry. <laughs> um, she has an incredible career, a, a great story to share with you guys. Um, we were actually, we're both at Rutgers at the same time, small world. Um, she was doing much bigger things than me, um, training to be a doctor and, and help out this world. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to her because she can do a better job explaining um, what she's done, where she's been. And again, we're honored to have you today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's really a pleasure to be here. As Coach Brady said, I'm Rewa Obuwilki, and I'll spend the next half an hour or so talking to you about ophthalmology and what ophthalmologists do and how, some, how someone can find themselves in the field of ophthalmology. Um, I have to share this with you guys. Between last week and next week, I have four presentations to give. And this is the one I've been the most excited about. So thank you for inviting me to be with you all this morning. Um, so I have to also explain the difference between ophthalmology and optometry because oftentimes people confuse the two. So ophthalmology is the field or specialty in medicine that deals with um, treating the ailments, conditions, or diseases of the eye through medical and surgical therapies, as opposed to optometry, where um, our optometry colleagues mostly take care of patients' um, refractive needs. They do glasses, they do contacts, and we work very closely with our optometry um, colleagues. They usually go to um, do a four-year undergraduate degree and then go to optometry school. Uh, while we do four years of undergraduate degree, four years of medical school, and anywhere from three to four years of um, a residency and an internship. So it's about 12 years, but who's counting? You just, if it's something you want to do, you just go for it without paying close attention to the time it takes you to achieve your goal. So a little bit about my background. I, um, my family is originally from Nigeria. I moved to New Jersey when I was 16 right after high school in Nigeria. I'm one of six children. So I was lucky to have my three older siblings already living in New Jersey by the time we moved. So that was, that was really nice and I was fortunate. And we had also vacationed in the US before. So this was, wasn't a, it was not a big culture shock to be in New Jersey. And um, Coach Brady and I, we intersect in, with Rutgers. I started off at Rutgers University and after two years when my parents knew I could handle myself and I wanted to move away for college, I was able to transfer to Boston University where I um, obtained my bachelor's in biology with a minor in math. So I want to at this point just mention that people don't have, students don't have to immediately start off with an expensive college. It's okay to start off in your state university if that's more affordable for your family and if it's closer to home and it's something you want to do. Some people can even start off at a two-year college, get an associate's degree before they go on to a four-year college to get their bachelor's degree. And I recommend that students um, major in whatever interests them. Yes, you do have some pre-medical requirements you have to um, fulfill before getting into medical school, but you do not necessarily have to be a science major. You can major in art history, major in English, just whatever interests you. Because I find if you're interested in a subject matter, you're more likely to study well and, and get really good grades in, in that field that you choose. And it, it is true, for medicine, we do need students with good grades. So I, I recommend anyone who's 
already interested in going into medicine, start working hard from high school. And it's a good um, way to, to train yourself for a future career because you, you have to be very disciplined. Absolutely. And so I finished my four years of college, then went back to New Jersey to my medical school, my state medical school. I was fortunate um, that I was um, offered a scholarship. So I was able to go back to New Jersey. Yeah, and then that's around the time I think Coach Brady was there also. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we intersected there. And so I did my four years of medical school. I was very interested in pursuing a specialty in neurosurgery. And this was even before I got into um, college. I was always interested in the brain. I found it fascinating. I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. Um, so, but by the time I got to medical school and I did my clinical rotations, I really realized that I enjoyed the outpatient setting, meaning I like to examine patients that were not necessarily hospitalized or in the hospital. Um, for their care. I like to be able to talk to my patients, to be able to converse with them. After the exam, they can go home and they can come back for their follow-ups. I really enjoyed that, but I loved working with my hands and doing surgery. So a friend of mine at the time said, why don't you try ophthalmology? It's a field where you can do surgery, but your patients are mostly ambulatory. So they come in to see you in the clinic or hospital, and then they can go back home and you can continue care with them on an outpatient basis. So that was the first time I started thinking about it. In the meantime, I had done research in neuroscience and I have to backtrack in college. I also did research while I was at Rutgers Newark. While I was at Boston University, I continued my research in the neuroscience field. And um, when I was in medical school, I continued some research too. So it's never too early to start doing research in something you're interested in. Even in, in high school, if you, um, we oftentimes have um, students that rotate with us and that get um, involved in some of our clinical research projects or basic science research work. I, I was lucky that I was able to work in a laboratory with um, Dr. Weiss Young. He was the neurosurgeon for, um, for Superman, actually. He was the one that was working with Christopher Reeves uh, at the time. So, wow. so that was really exciting work that That's I cool. did. Yeah. So I graduated from medical school. I took a year off to finish my neurosurgery research and it, th that was optional. After medical school, you can go um, directly to your internship or residency. And that's the chosen field that hopefully during your four years of medical school, you have de decided on. Um, so um, in my case, I had taken a week of rotation to observe what ophthalmologists do after a friend of mine had said, check out ophthalmology. So I did that week of rotation and shadowing an ophthalmologist. And I said, I think this is a cool field. The ophthalmologist I worked with where um, they had their private office in Princeton, New Jersey. And that was the practice that was affiliated with uh, medical school. So they all looked happy. They, they worked hard, but at the end of the day, they could go home to be with their families. And that, that really spoke to me because I wanted, in addition to being a physician, I wanted to have a family at, at some point. Um, and um, I chose ultimately to go into um, medicine as opposed to another field because I wanted to be able to give back and, and help. And I wanted to also challenge myself because another option that I had was to get my PhD in math and and teach I, I love math but i just thought you know a, a career in medicine i think would challenge me number one i think will be fulfilling and i think i would be making a difference so so that's why i decided to go with that field but i always knew i wanted to do some sort of research from a young age and i love the sciences and so that's that's how i that's what piqued my interest for, for those who don't always know from a young age they want to do medicine, that's okay. Some people stumble into it after they've, they've had second careers. When I was in medical school, I had a number of um, um, st fellow students that had other careers. I had a friend that was an engineer and he was a manager in his, his department before he decided to do something else that would be more fulfilling for his life. I have um, 
I had a colleague who was the micro, she was the microbiology professor and then decided that she could do this and went on to medical school. Um, and so it's, it's not always the, the initial career. Some people take that as a second career. Um, so ophthalmology itself, um, my practice is at, at Georgetown University. And I have a, so that's my university practice where I work with medical students and I work with um, some of the college students that know they are already in, interested in this field. And I have a private office here in Southern Maryland. I'm, that's a bit unusual because you don't have too many ophthalmologists splitting their time between a private practice and a university practice. But I always wanted to do that. And I thought that would really keep me challenged and um, up to date with the different research if I were in a university setting, but I could just have a more laid back setting in a private practice. So I split my time between both. And I, I found that to be really rewarding. I have some colleagues that are straight, that work completely in the university setting and do research in addition to taking care of patients. And I have um, colleagues that only have private practices. So any of those things are, are, are possible, combination of both or just working um, separately or individually in either practice private practice or the university setting. I have really enjoyed being um, in this field of ophthalmology. We were very fortunate that um, many of our patients do very well because we have all kinds of um, therapies nowadays that we can treat conditions that were not easily um, dealt with even a few years ago. So I'm able to, many of the times, restore, um, help patients restore their sight. And sometimes it's just with using eye drops. Um, other times it's through, it's through surgery. But many people, at least in my opinion, I tell many people ophthalmology is a happy field because people are excited. You can restore their sight and they can drive to work and they can see well enough to go to school and earn a living. So it's, 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 it's been a field that I'm completely um, happy with. Absolutely. And here's our family. <laughs> yeah. Um, your son is a, is a freshman is a, at Riken. Right, freshman at Riken. <laughs> and your yeah. daughter is yeah. eighth, grade, eighth grade? She's in seventh grade at ANS. So, and, and Luke loves Riken. And you guys are probably going to get Amelia next year when she Super. comes to Riken. So, <laughs> that's, that's her goal. Super. And, um, and um, my husband's a radiologist, he's also in medicine, um, but I think wow. my field is cooler. So I'm sure at some point he may talk to you guys about what the radiologist done. We won't tell him that. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I think he knows. <laughs> Here was the info too, sorry, I didn't have this up earlier, but this was her residency and fellowship information she had spoken about. And again, please feel free to ask questions or jump in. Um, if you have anything to ask uh, Dr. Obowoki today. Yeah, guys, I'm, I'm here for you to answer any questions, any particular questions about the field or any particular surgeries. I'm happy to talk some more about really um, my path. Any questions? Like I said, I've been excited to talk to you guys. Absolutely. Um, and we have some future, was, um, future doctors on this call this. for sure. There's definitely some future doctors on oh, this great. call. Oh, Some of the names. So. Uh, they definitely have a pre-med pre -med direction um, as far as that goes. I thought it was really interesting how, you know, you had an interest and then by doing different things, you figured out that, hey, neurology wasn't your thing, you know, but you said in high school, so, so someone just asked a question about that. Like, when did you know that you really, you wanted to be a doctor? Like, when did it start for you? Okay. So I would say probably towards the end of my high, of high school uh, is when I knew. Um, I always knew I wanted to do some sort of research. I love the sciences. And I just remember as a child, just picturing myself doing some sort of research in, in a lot. At the time, I used to think I would be in a library looking up things. So, or in a lab looking up things. That's what I, I was always drawn to. I have to 
explain that in Nigeria, you, by high school, you have to decide, at least when I was there, you have to decide what you're going to do in university. So at age 15 or 16, you knew or you were oh encouraged to, yeah, which was the, the similar to the British system and other places in Europe. It's similar in Germany, where my husband is from. At age 15 or 16, whenever, at least in Nigeria, we were done at age 15, 16, you went into university that was for, if you chose medicine, it was a six year career path, as opposed to in the US where you can just go to college and go to a university for four years, get a bachelor's degree. So in a way it's split into two, you get your bachelor's and then you can decide, oh, I'm going to go on to graduate work and I can go to medical school or get my PhD or go to law school. In Nigeria, you decided that you were going to engineering school or you were going to law school or you were going to, into medicine. So that may have been why already at that time I knew, okay, I need to decide which path I want and I love the sciences, so I'll think about this. So I already went into university in the US knowing that I was interested in, in medicine. Um, but again, I toyed with the idea of getting my PhD in math. So you, you can decide as early or as late as you want. I, I had colleagues, as I mentioned, that medicine was a second career for them. And they realized they wanted more out of life and they wanted to be able to help people or give back in some way. And so you don't always have to decide when you're in high school like I did. That's fantastic. Anyone else want to turn on their mic and ask a question directly? All right, here's a question. What kind of jobs should high, school, high schoolers look at to get a sense of the medical field? That's a very good question. I, I really like that question. I think that any job, in my opinion, really prepares you for <laughs> a field of medicine. I, I really think that. But you should find a physician to shadow. So I'm one of the physicians that students can shadow. You can send me an email, give me a call, and um, I'll try to set up a deal where, if possible, you see what I do in the university setting at Georgetown, or you spend some time with, with me in my private office. I, I've taken a number of students and interns. So, and it doesn't have to be in, and the, it doesn't have to be in the field of medicine you're interested in. It can just be in any field of medicine. If it's your primary care doctor, if it's a pediatrician, you say, can I hang out with you for a few days? So that at least that gives you an idea of what that particular physician does. And then as you get a bit older, you can decide if you're more inclined to study a particular organ, the brain, the eyes, but just shadow any physician. Now regarding jobs, I, I think that you have to be a people person to be in most fields of medicine and you have to be a team player. So I, I'd spoken to Coach Brady earlier that we love athletes and we love students that have done anything else that's d diverse before going to medicine. Um, I'm on the selection committee for Georgetown University for the ophthalmology residency program. So these are students that are finished from college and med school, they're now full-fledged doctors and they've chosen to study ophthalmology. So we, we just found out the six students we, we accepted on, on the first. We were excited about those students. Now, on that selection committee, one thing I look for, and I rank favor, favorably, and so do the other doctors on the team, is we, rank, we look for students that have worked, that have held, that have held any job. It could be a job at um, Chick-fil-A or really a job... Um, helping in, a, in, a, in an elementary school, anything. And it doesn't, volunteer jobs are great, but if it's a paid job, we also like to see you've done something else other than just studying and focusing on medicine. So to get a feel for medicine, try to shadow any doctor that you've, you've come across in your family doctor, um, or ask them if they know someone who's taking a student. But if you have, if you have um, time during the summer, just do a job. My son, Luke, we're hoping to, to um, have him work as, a tech, as tech support in a, in a computer 
um, um, store because he loves computers. Um, sadly, I don't think he's interested in ophthalmology, but it would be nice for him to just have that experience of working in, in, in a field he likes because you, you get to interact with people, you learn responsibility, and it's, it's just good to be able to work with others in, in, a, in a work setting. So Absolutely. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that was a great answer. Another question uh, from a student is, obviously it's getting more and more competitive um, for med school. Do you have any advice during undergrad to kind of help yourself um, to get into a med school? Or, you, or do, you not think that, do, you, do you think it's true that it's getting more competitive uh, for med school? For medical than, school? Yes. I mean, I, I have to say yes to that. I, I have to, and um, when I applied for because my husband asked me yesterday, how many schools did you apply to? I said, I think I applied to five, I think, at the time. And I was lucky I got in, into three med schools and I was on the wait list wow. for two of the medical wow. schools. But I, I withdrew because I had already decided I was coming back to my state university. Right. Well, ignorance is bliss. I did not know you were supposed to apply to so many. I know students that apply to up to 50 schools now and some i mean that increases your chances of getting in of course but it's also it could be also it could be very expensive and people that whose parents don't have the means could be at a disadvantage based on that but a lot of the applications now are online so for us you had to manually fill out each individual right. application <laughs> i wasn't going to do 50 i figure five is, is enough right. and um so it is more competitive now that's why the advice i give to students who are interested in medicine is number one do choose a major that you like choose a major you're interested in i, I can't stress that enough yes it would be great if you were a biology major or biochemistry major or math major but it doesn't have to be in the sciences choose something you like and do really well at that and then take the pre-medical um, prerequisites um, most of the schools have a pre-medical advisor that tells you, okay, you need organic chemistry this semester, you need general chemistry, and you need math this semester. So someone can work with you, even if you're a French major, you can still carve out time to take the prerequisites. So, what, so number one, choose something that you're good at and do really well in that. And... Um, also choose a school that you think you would fit well in it's nice if you get into an ivy league school but if you're not one that would do well being far away from home without family or friends close by don't go to that school choose and choose a school that your parents and your family can kind of afford i think that's really important too because you're more likely to stay and succeed if you're not right. worried about if you're coming back next semester and if you're enjoying what you're studying, you're more likely to succeed. Then do other things to make you stand out. That is great. Do advice. research. Do right. research. And again, it, it doesn't have to be, it would be nice if it's in a science field because um, physicians, I think, on some level have to do, have to be researchers, even if it's just clinical research. You see a patient with an interesting disease, you can write it up and publish it so that other physicians who come across this condition say, oh, this was reported and this is how that patient was successfully treated. So I think you have to just be some sort of a researcher with medicine, but it doesn't have to be just in the sciences. If you're doing work with computers or something else, it's, it's also something that stands out on your CV and that um, other interviewers would, would pay attention to research go to a university that you will fit well in choose a major that you'd like and um try to be well-rounded like i said if, you, if you're an athlete we like that we just got two really good questions let me give you the okay. first one okay this is actually okay. a really good question how do you avoid burning out <laughs> it's a great question yes um that's a really good question and in any field, I mean, we always hear about physicians burning out, but I think really in any field in life, people can burn out. But what helps is that I take time to do things that make me happy. 
I take time to, I love spending time with my family and my friends and I make sure I do that. Um, even simple things like going to the movies. Uh, my sister was making fun of me yesterday that I love popcorn. I do. So just whatever it is that makes you happy, carve out time to do that. If it's jogging, if it's running, what, whatever, do that. But I, I carve out time to do things that enrich me and enrich my soul. Because when I'm rested and I'm, I'm enriched, I'm a better person for my patients, for my family, for my friends. So you have to find time to, to take care of yourself. But that also means being able to manage your time well. I even say this to my kids. If you have some homework to do, finish your homework and say, okay, I'm going to get to watch this movie that I really like, or I'm going to get to go to the beach or something, but I have to spend my three hours doing my work so that when I'm hanging out with my family or friends, I'm not distracted. So I find if you manage your time better and carve out time for yourself, it's, you are able to cut down on your burnout rate. What some physicians do, as some ophthalmologists in particular do, is they go to some third world countries to give back their time. Maybe a week in a year, they go to different places in Africa or South, South America to, to do surgeries. That they're not getting paid to do that, but it enriches them. For me, I have a number of patients in DC, even in Southern Maryland here, that these are people that are not as fortunate. Some of them don't have insurance that I take care of without expecting to be, um, to be paid or compensated for. And I find that these patients are the most grateful. They, they tell me how they pray for me. Some of them bring food for me. That keeps me going. So, and I, that helps with burnout because I remember those patients that think I'm an angel. Or I've done so much for them. They've changed their life. And so if I'm having a hard day, I say, no, I have patients that think I'm doing something cool for them. And that keeps me going. <laughs> So we're running, out of, we're running out of time. One more question, but also I'll remind you guys, her email's on the page here and she's open to you emailing her with any questions you might have. Um, and she has to go at 1030. So quick last question is, what is your routine like on a daily basis? Uh, excellent. So on a daily basis, I'll, since I split my time between two offices, I'll give you what I do on my private office day and what I do on a university day. So... Monday for Mondays, I'm in my private office. So it's only 15 minutes from my house. So I get my patient stat anywhere from around 8.15 to 8.30. I have a technician that's like our nurse that helps me um, start with the patient's workup. She checks their vision. She checks their eye pressure, puts some dilating drops in their eyes so I can examine them. So on Monday, I spend a whole day from about 8.30 till about 5.00 seeing patients and, and then in my office, my private office, and then I can go home to hang out with my family. I have to take call for the university and for my private office. Sometimes when you're on call, you carry the pager for about a week at a time and it would involve some weekend, but we're lucky that we don't have a ton of um, ophthalmology emergencies. There are a couple of things you have to go in for late at night or during the weekends, but that's really rare. So I take a call maybe one week out of every six weeks or every two months. Um, so one day I could be in the office all day. And then Wednesday, or yesterday, for example, Thursday, Thursday, I was in surgery for Georgetown. So it is an early day. I get up at about 5.30. The surgery center is in Silver Spring. I like living in Southern Maryland, so I don't have to commute but I was in surgery from about eight o'clock till about um, 1.30. And I was able to do seven surgeries and majority of them were cataract surgeries to improve people's vision. But I had two other surgeries that were different um, that we did. I had a resident doctor that was assisting me. So she's learning and I love that because it's fun. I'm not the only one doing the surgery. I have a resident that I can show how to do different things and we talk about the case and I had a medical student who is not even going into ophthalmology she's going into internal medicine but she was there to also observe what eye doctors do so that when she's an internal medicine doctor she knows 
when to refer a patient out to me if they had been a serious eye condition. So Thursday I was in surgery, but I was done at two. So I could go to the grocery store. Today is my daughter's birthday, so I could pick up her birthday gift and card. And so I was really home around three o'clock. So, but there are some days that you stay a little bit longer. On a Tuesday when I'm at Georgetown, because of the commute and because I'm teaching residents in the clinic, and sometimes we have some more complex patients, I may not get home until seven, but that's not every day. Ophthalmology is a specialty that you can choose to have pretty much a nine to five deal or eight to five o'clock deal for most of the time. So it, it, it's one of those fields that allows you to have a good lifestyle. So Absolutely. I'm happy. Well, I'm, I'm going to stop you there. Uh, it's 1030. Really appreciate your time today. This was fabulous. Um, as I said before, her email's at the bottom. Um, do you have a final message for the kids before you go? Oh, well, <laughs> guys, enjoy be being in high school enjoy it. I know those of you who have decided already you want to do a field of medicine are probably already focused and laser focused and that's all you have to do. You have to have the good grades. Yes, I get that, but enjoy yourself too. Life is more than just studying. And after you attain your goal of being a physician, if that's what you choose, you don't want to stop and say, what next? No, you want to have enjoyed the journey too not just the end result. So study hard, but make time for your family and your friends. And always, always recheck, check yourself. Am I going into this field for the right reason? Yes, you make a good living as a physician, but there are better ways to make money as opposed to being a physician. So make sure it's more than just for the lifestyle. It's hopefully it's because you do want to help people and you want to give back and you want to contribute. So wonderful. Yeah. And Thank I'm you happy so much. To, to talk with any of you. Super. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Coach Thank you. Brady. Enjoy your this weekend and I hope I'll get to see you on campus sometime. Bye, okay. Guys. All Thank right. You. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you. It was my